Here in the corner of this sweet corn field on the Isle of Wight is a deadly toxic plant that's a long way from home. My name is Joseph, this is Field Study, and this week I'm going to introduce you to Datura, or the thorn apple. So this plant that we have growing here is Datura stramonium, or the thorn apple. In other parts of the world it's called other things like Jimson weed and there are lots of other common names for this because it occurs in loads of places around the world. Originally it is from the Americas and is non-native to the UK. This is the first time that I have seen this plant in the wild. This is probably what we call a garden escape. So seed that has been spread from one of the sort of formal gardens where this plant is grown for its beautiful glossy leaves and trumpet shaped flowers. <laughs> Look at these flowers, they are gorgeous. This plant is in the Solanaceae family, so that is the same family as things like tomatoes, chilies, tobacco, uh, cape gooseberries, which the leaves of this look a lot like, although they are more sort of reptilian and spiky. In the UK we have a native toxic cousin of this plant, which is belladonna or deadly nightshade, which is another member of the nightshade family that could kill you. Now, this plant is highly toxic. And this is the reason why I'm teaching you about it, is because it is important to know the most toxic plants that we have in the UK when you're going out foraging, so you can identify them and be aware of them. It just reduces the amount of risk, and it also reduces the amount of mistakes that can happen. This plant gets its toxicity from a group of alkaloids called tropine alkaloids, um, and it contains things like atropine. So if you eat enough of this plant, then it will kill you, and it will kill you relatively quickly. So it is one never to be ingested. If you look online, you'll find all sorts of like clickbaity articles um, about people in different parts of the world that use this as a hallucinogenic drug um, under sort of controlled conditions. Uh, but I will warn you now, do not try and replicate that. It is interesting when we look at plants, um, especially some plants in this family, the Solanaceae, the amount of different compounds that it has in it, the plant contains, um, vary wildly from plant to plant. So even if you were trying to do it for hallucinatory purposes, you could make a very small mistake, and we're talking a very small mistake, and you could end up being a statistic and a news story. And I don't think any amount of hallucinatory revelation is worth that. It is no good pursuing enlightenment if you can't share your findings with others afterwards, if you know what I mean. Um, but this plant is beautiful. Look at these lovely trumpet-shaped flowers with these filamental, almost flame-like things coming off of the edge of them. Uh, another common name for this is moonflower, and there really is something sort of stellar and nebulous about the way that those sort of tendrils twist. I love it. When this plant fruits and goes to seed, it creates these fantastic sort of conker-looking things on the elbows of its branches, these spiky-looking, strange, lychee-looking uh, things. And they look really unusual, really alien. That isn't really a morphology that we see much in this part of the world. And it also gives it the name that we like to call it here in the UK especially, uh, and that is the thorn apple, because the fruit has loads of thorns on it. It seems to be really happy here though, being watered twice a day by these massive water cannons which are keeping this sweet corn from withering and dying. Uh, but this has sort of potatoey looking leaves and that sort of smooth stemmed, pointed leaved reptilian thing going on. So it's one to definitely look out for in our hedgerows. It is relatively uncommon. However, it does occur, it likes waste ground and can sort of colonize really low nutrient areas. So as I always say, foraging is a discipline, it is knowledge earned over time, and knowledge can keep you safe, it's the only thing that can keep you safe. So, it is important to learn about plants which, if you ingest them, could do you harm, as well as plants which are delicious edibles. Uh, both of them have equal importance in my brain, so then when I go out into the landscape, I can know exactly what to pick and exactly what to admire from a distance. So there we go, I hope you enjoyed that or found it useful. If you want to know more about wild edible plants and foraging here in the UK, then hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Until next week, take care. <laughs> this reminds me of that film Signs. <laughs>